guys, welcome back sa aking vlog. So, uh, for those na bago lang dito, ako nga pala si Trisha Laganyosa. So, ako po ay isang Filipino. So, um, in today's vlog, hindi na tayo magpatumpik-tumpik pa. In today's vlog, I'm gonna be sharing to you guys kung ano yung uh, visa application process namin. So, I'll be straightforward. So, it's just really six steps. It's as easy as that. I know sometimes if you ask some friends, it becomes overwhelming. But I'll be honest with, in this blog, I'm gonna be discussing to you yung six easy, simple steps na ginawa namin actually in our own, with our own experience na ginawa namin to get our, um, to get our student visa dito sa South Australia. So for everyone's reference, um, I'm an international student here in South Australia sa Adelaide. I'm studying Masters in Accounting sa Captain Business School. I started last November of 2019, so I'm almost finishing with my degree. It's a two-year degree, and it's uh, composed of six trimesters, so patapos na ako. So, um, yeah, let's start with. So, our uh, first process, I'll open my notes. So, yung pinaka-first talaga, guys, is consultation. So, yes, of course, uh, if like interesado kayo or like you are planning or nasa utak nyo na yung ngayon na gusto nyo mag-aral sa Australia or maybe some other country, very important step is consultation. I would say very critical yung step na to because honestly at this point, magde-decide kayo kung anong country, at first anong country kayo, anong country kung yung gusto mag-aral. Second is anong degree or anong, anong pag-aaralan nyo. Ano ba yan? Accounting, engineering. Third is, ano yung qualification? Or like, would it be like a certification? Would it be a diploma? Or like, would it be a master's degree? And then, pagkatapos makapag-decide nyo yun, magde-decide na naman kayo. Um, if Australia, where specifically in Australia, would it be in Melbourne, Sydney, or Adelaide, or Perth, or Brisbane? So, yeah, guys, very important and very critical part yung consultation kasi parang ito yung pinaka-first step, pinaka-first, oh, yeah, pinaka-first step, pinaka-first step ng inyong process. And, um, yeah, yun. So, um, consultation apart. And then, um, with consultation, guys, I know, like, ang iba hindi pa sila ready na pumunta sa agency, hindi pa sila ready na pumunta doon. So, it's okay. You can research on your own. But, I would highly recommend na kumausap kayo ng education counselor or yung mga agency sa Pinas. So, marami tayong mga agency sa Pinas. I would highly recommend because they know best, actually. Alam nila yung ano yung ano yung mga galawan, paano mag-apply, so they can guide you para hindi siya masyadong mahirap sa inyo. So, I would recommend na lumapit kayo sa agency and during at that point, yun nga yung na-mention ko, yung pag decide nyo. Pero very important question that I would recommend you guys na itanong nyo sa agency nyo is, um, tanungin nyo sila, may pathway ba ako dito? Parang yun, tanungin nyo, very important question. Kasi minsan kasi, let's be honest, yung mga agencies, education counselors, hindi na nila iniisip yun. As long as mapunta kayo na Australia, that's it. Pero kayo, you also have, of course, may plan kayo na after kong mag-aral ng two years sa Australia, gusto kong, ano, gusto kong magtrabaho dun. Or parang, or whatever your plans is. Ano ba yung mga plans niyo? So, you always have to ask them, may pathway ba ko dun? So, in our experience, guys, nung nag-apply kami, so, I'm interested with accounting. So, nakapag-decide talaga agad-agad kami accounting. Tapos, nakapag-decide agad-agad kami Australia kasi parang yun yung parang pinaka-mura so far sa natanong namin. And, nung nagtanong kami, parang inoferent kami, ah, okay, ah, pwede kang mag-ano, certification, pwede kang mag-diploma, or parang may inoffer pa sa akin ibang 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 certification pero nagtanong kami may pathway ba kami noon kasi um yung hindi alam ng iba is let's say for example pag nagkuha ka lang ng isang diploma minsan after ng 2 year degree mo after ng 2 year na pag-aaral mo actually kailangan mo umuwi ng Pilipinas kasi wala kang extension but for our case guys since naka master's degree ako after ng after ng two after kong graduate may actually may 2 years na post graduate ako that means na pwede ako magtrabaho full time ng 2 years Tapos kasama ko yung husband ko. So, yung, in, yung dependent visa ko is may 2 years na ex extension din siya. So, parang nung nag-decide kami, mas mahal yung master's degree versus sa yung first na in-offer niya sa akin na parang certification. Mas sobrang mas mahal siya. 
Pero nung nag-isip kami ng asawa ko, parang sabi ko, ah, okay, parang gusto namin makapagtrabaho din kasi gusto namin na hopefully makapag-settle down sa Australia. So, nung, nung, nung ganun na point pa lang, parang sabi ko, okay, so master's degree tayo. But the next question, guys, is, I know parang minsan yung mga courses na may pathway baka sobrang mahal din. I'll be honest with you guys, yung master's degree na kinukuha ko ngayon, medyo expensive talaga siya, medyo mahirap siya. Medyo mahirap siya, medyo mahal siya. I mean, hindi mahirap like pag-aaralan. Uh, like almost lahat ng paaralan naman sa Pilipinas, nag-aaral naman talaga tayo. So, pero in terms financially, medyo mahal nga siya. Pero that's gonna be a content for another vlog. Kung paano namin na-afford ng asawa ko yung, ano, yung pang-tuition namin or yung pambayad namin sa tuition ko. Kasi nga, masters, medyo mahal. Pero may mga mura naman na may mga postgrad. Kasi may mga kilala ko na kumukuha ng diploma of child care, mas mura siya. Tapos, may postgrad visa siya or like yung cookery. Basta tanongin nyo lang yung agency nyo. If, um, pag nakapag-decide na kayo, part sa decision process nyo, tanongin nyo talaga sila, may pathway ba ako? May postgrad visa ba ako after nun? So, yeah, that's part, uh, that's first part, consultation. After nyo makapag-decide lahat-lahat, guys, sa amin, it actually took one week. So, that's one week. So, after namin makapag-decide lahat-lahat, binigyan kami agad ng agency ng list ng mga documents na kailangan namin i-prepare. So, which is the second part? Gather your requirements. So, may notes ako dito, guys. So, yung mga requirements, guys, easy. Isa lang ata yung, nagpa, yung time consuming na nakuha ko. First is, TOR mo, transcript of records, which is mostly siguro sa atin, nasa kanila na yun. Next is diploma. Next is um, employment certificate. Yung employment certificate is current and past employers. Madali lang kunin yun. Next is your resume, which is means lahat sa atin siguro meron ng resume. Next is if may mga PRC ID, PRC ID mo. Next is um, birth certificate. So mga birth certificate mo. And then, next is statement of purpose. Statement of purpose, guys, is ano siya. I think I remember mga 5 pages sa akin. Short bond, 5 pages, 11 minutes. So, parang emotion siya. Tapos, ano, single spacing. So, pero guys, statement of purpose is technically parang, kasi wala siyang interview. So, parang letter siya sa immigration explaining na uh, bakit, bakit gusto niyong mag-aral sa Australia, bakit Australia na pili niyo. Pero, guys, Huwag kayong matakot kasi may guide yung, may guide na ibibigay sa'yo yung agency nyo. May bibigay siya na guide sa'yo. Kaso hindi nila pa rin yung gawin for you kasi super personal niya. Like, may mga personal details na dapat nanggagaling sa'yo. So, ikaw yung gagawa talaga. Pero may guide na ibibigay sa'yo yung agency nyo. So, huwag kayong masyadong matakot. But don't take this for granted. Kasi may kilala ako guys na hindi nakakapasa sa visa application nila. Dahil nga parang hindi masyadong convincing yung statement of purpose. Isipin niyo na walang interview. So, the only way na kausapin mo yung immigration is through your statement of purpose. So, dapat galingan nyo dun. Pero, again, may guide yung agency kung ano yung mga dapat ilagay nyo, ano yung format, ganun-ganun. So, di ka masyadong matakot. Statement of purpose, I think, ginawa ko lang siya ng mga tatlong, ano lang, tatlong, tatlong gabi. So, like, ginagawa ko lang siya, tapos edit-edit. Tapos, nung patapos na ako, si, nung tapos na ako, si David ko sa agency, tapos may mga konting comments, tapos revise, revise, revise. So, mabilis lang siya. Yung nagpatagal lang sa akin, guys, is yung, um, uh, PTE. So, for those na hindi alam yung PTE, guys, masikat yung IELTS. So, PTE is, is technically para sa akin, honestly, is mas, uh, mas madali siya, mas easy siya in comparison to IELTS. Yung only difference, I think, is uh, more or less same lang yung, uh, yung, yung, yung mga questions, yung process. Uh, yung only difference lang is si PTE is all computerized. Wala yung part na interview ka talaga ng physical na tao. Pero ano pa rin siya, like hindi siya madali. And yes, pare kayong may mga review centers din ng PTE. Pero personally, um, hindi na ako nag-review center. Yung ginawa ko lang is, um, nag, may binigay sa akin yung agency ko na parang sa YouTube na parang nag-tutorial. So, dun, dun na ako nanonood-nood and practice-practice. I'll be honest with you guys, ito yung nagpatagal sa akin kasi matagal akong naging confident na pa rin ako mag-take ng PTE. I think one month. Tapos nagtatrabaho ako in the morning. So, usually, nag-aaral ako like in the evening, pag nasa mood ako, or minsan like on the weekends, nag-aaral ako, like nagpa-practice-practice ako. As, I think after one month, saka, saka ako naging confident, okay, 
okay na ako mag-take ng PTE. Bakit ako matagal naging confident? Kasi guys, tatatakot din ako. Kasi PTE, uh, yung pag-take ng exam ng PTE uh, will cost you 10,000 pesos. So parang sabi ko, dapat one take lang. Tapos, I think pababa lang naman yung hiningi sa akin. Parang 70 lang ata. So, parang hindi din ako masyadong na-pressure. Pero parang sabi ko, dapat one take lang kasi nga mahal nga. Tapos, ayoko namang magsayang. Pero guys, um, for, for your reference lang din, hindi lahat ng mga, hindi lahat ng mga pag-aaralan nyo dito sa Australia or yung pag-a-applyan nyo ng school magre-require ng PTE. May mga friends ako na hindi na na nag-take ng PTE. Mm -mm. Ako kasi, since master's yung kinukuha ko, so parang required ng school na mag-PTE. So nag-PTE ako. One month ako guys, nag-prepare ng PTE. Online lang ako nag-review sa YouTube. So, after one month, after nag, yung PTE, I think nagpabook ako ng exam, tapos mga 3 days after, lumabas na yung results. So, after mga, after, so, after one month, natapos ko mag-gather yung requirements, so, binigay ko na lahat sa agency. Then, pagkatapos nun, proceed na, um, Uh, parang ano lang, parang pinolish lang ng agency, tapos sinabit na nila sa school, para ano, para sinabit na nila sa school tapos, match yung school guys, depende siya, so may mga school na mabilis lang mag-reply, may mga school na match matagal, sa akin personally yung nangyari is, match kasi parang maraming students ata, so parang it took one week for them na mag-reply so nag-reply sila ng ano, ng parang school offer ito yung ano, school offer, tapos may naka-indicate doon na parang magkano yung tuition fee tuition fee, so nung natanggap ko yung school offer, so ano lang like, nag, ano lang, may pinirmahan lang ako, may mga, mga additional uh, requirements lang sila na hiningi, which is resume lang naman, parang may mga, edit, mga edits lang sila na hiningi tapos at the same time guys at this point, magbabayad na kayo ng tuition, so uh, for your reference guys Maraming schools, I don't know with other countries, pero dito sa South Australia, maraming schools na hindi actually kailangan like yung whole degree yung babayaran mo. So in our case, parang ano siya, every trimester ka magbabayad. So nung pa nung, nung nag-apply pa lang ako ng student visa, so yung kailangan ko lang bayaran is one trimester. So yung one trimester So, for your reference lang, before ko makalimutan, yung tuition ko guys, for the whole two years, so, kinitake ko is Master's in Accounting, yung tuition ko for the whole two years is 37,440 Australian Dollars. Tapos, yung tuition ko, for tuition ko, for one trimester lang is, um, yung amount niya guys, is nasa 180,900 pesos. So, yun yung kailangan kong bayaran at that point. So, pag nabayaran ko na yun sa school, yung uh, school offer magiging ano siya parang ano ba yun parang um, it's official na siya official na enrolled ka na certificate of enrollment pa lang certificate of enrollment so nung nabayaran ko na yung 180,900 180, pesos nung nabayaran ko na siya sa school nakatanggap ako after one week ng official na certificate of enrollment so enrolled ako guys may school na ako at this point so nung pagkatapos ko ma-enroll Makatapos ko ma-enroll, at the same time, parang before, before a lodge, before tayo pumunta, so yun yung fourth step, diba? Accept offer ng school and then magbayad. So, before tayo pumunta, guys, sa, sa pag-apply na talaga ng student visa application, yung kailangan natin bayaran dito, dito na magbabayad tayo, before tayo mag-lodge sa immigration ng Australia, is kailangan mong magbayad ng insurance mo good for two years. So, maraming mga options, may bibigay na options yung agency sa inyo. For my case, guys, yung insurance ko, good for one year, cost me 46,141 pesos. Ako lang yun mag isa Mm -mm. So, good for two years is 46,141 pesos. Yun yung insurance ko good for two years. And then, nung may insurance na ako, afterwards nun, parang I think pinagsasabay-sabay ko na siya, nag-take na ako ng medical examination. Yung medical examination ko, nagpa-schedule, madali nga lang din guys eh. Madali lang yung pag-schedule ano, pag ko ng medical. Tapos yung results, I think after 5 days, lumabas na siya. Yung bayad ko sa medical examination ko is 7,500 pesos. So, yun yung sa student visa application. So, nakapagbayad na ako ng insurance, meron akong medical. Tapos, after nun, guys, yung next step na is 
pag-lodge na ng visa mo. So, meron na, nasa, nasa agency nyo na lahat ng requirements nyo. So, yung only na lang is babayaran mo yung student visa application which cost me 24,000 pesos. So, binayaran ko yung 24,000 pesos tapos, bam, kinumpleto lang ng agency, may mga polishing, may mga finilapan lang siya, tapos may sinensya sa akin to verify if tama ba yung lahat ng information kasi nga ilalodge na. Tapos, nag-oo kami like exactly on the same day and guys as far as i remember i think na lodge sa ng agency ko mga hapon na siya let's say 5 pm i'm not very sure and guys in less than 1 hour na approve lang yung visa ko mm -hmm. so after 1 hour approve na yung visa ko so tapos na yung process tapos afternoon is pag may visa na ako kasi nga guys um, dadalhin ko yung husband ko as my uh, dependent visa. So, that's gonna be a content for another vlog. I-share din namin yung process namin sa kanya. So, nung na-approve yung visa ko, match happy, happy, celebrate, celebrate. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, as mentioned, then pre-departure. So, I think na-approve yung visa ko, guys, mga, um, mga, I think, mga third week of October. Tapos, magsisimula yung uh, school ko November 6. So, I have to fly in as early as, kasi parang sinulit ko pa siya, kasi nagulat na kami, parang ang bilis lang ng process na, parang akala namin, 2021 pa kami, or 2020 pa kami magpo-fly in, nagulat na lang kami na, ay, in like class in one month, aalis na pala ako dapat ng Australia, kasi hahabulin ko yung, yung ano, yung parang, yung school. So, after, I think na-approve siya mga third week of October, by sinulit ko lang siya, so mga November 4, Nag-fly in ako papunta ng Australia tapos nagsimula yung pasukan namin November 6. So, uulitin ko lang guys ha. Ang ika-6 na process pala is pre-departure. So, bili ka lang ng ticket mo, like punta ka lang ulit sa agency or yan ka lang nila. Ano ba yung mga weather doon? Ano yung mga ng documents na i-prepare mo pag pag-fly mo and so so, yes guys, uulitin ko lang ulit yung uh, process. So, again, it's uh, six easy simple steps. Consultation firstly, then gather yung requirements mo pangalawa. Third is, isasubmit lang ng agency yung application sa school. And then, pang-apat, i-accept mo lang yung offer and then magbabayad ka. Pang-lima is, um, yung student visa application. And then, six is pre-departure. Yep, fly to Australia na agad. So, uh, yeah, for everyone's reference lang ulit. So, magkano nga ba talaga yung total-total na nagastos ko uh, sa process? So, ulitin ko lang. So, that's 10,000 yung nagastos ko sa PTE. Yung uh, one trimester na school fees ko is 180,900 pesos. And then, yung insurance ko good for two years was 46,141 pesos. And yung um, medical examination ko was 7,500 and then, yung student visa application fee ko was 24000 So, 268541 guys, yun ang gastos ko para makapunta ng Australia. And then, yeah, so moving forward, um, yung uh, tuition fees ko the following trimesters, pinag na namin dito na sa South Australia through our work, which is gonna be a content for another vlog. And if may mga questions kayo or um, just comment down below, and then we'll try as much as possible to answer if may, if alam ko naman yung sagot. And um, just for everyone's reference, yung asawa ko din guys, nakapagtrabaho siya as an education counselor dito sa Australia. So I'll also try to get some information from him. If may mga questions kayo, mag-comment lang kayo. And yeah, I encourage everyone um, na parang nagpa-plano, um, just take the first step, uh, do the consultation, and then let's see from there on. So, I think that's it for today's vlog, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. And yeah, um, see you in my next vlog. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a good day. Bye-bye.